What's up, everybody? Today, I'm going to show you what glass morphism is, and I'm also going to show you how to create this and realize this in the browser. Oh, look at that. How cool. Yes, I am in the new house, in the new studio. Of course, the walls are blank right now because I haven't had time to do anything with them. Uh, but people have been telling me glass morphism in the past week. What is that? It sounds a lot like new morphism. And in fact, it actually comes from the same guy. Um, so basically, if you go to Dribbble and type that in, you'll see there's 85 results right now. And this is what it is, basically. It's taking, uh, you have to have something in the background. You can't just really have a flat color or anything. And then on the container sitting on top of it, your goal is to make it look like glass. And the type of glass that gives you like a blurry or blurs the heck out of everything behind it. Kind of like a shower or whatever, a shower glass. So people can't see you naked and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> and there's been multiple tutorials on YouTube about this already. Um, so I'm going to take it a step in a different direction and show you how to realize it in HTML and CSS rather than just design software. And in fact, design software like Adobe XD or Figma, they don't do a good job of actually realizing because they don't give a good blur. Uh, but in this case with CSS, it gives you the desired effect out of the box. All right, so again, we're going to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with the help of GSAP, the GreenSock Animation Platform, to create uh, what I showed you at the beginning. And just to show you one more time, I refresh. It's very cool. Like, uh, notice there's no blur, but we animate the blur along with the X position, and it kind of creates like this uh, motion blur effect. Very cool. As always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get started. But before we begin, if you really want to know how to apply these really cool UI effects like glass morphism and new morphism, you really have to understand UI design fundamentals first, which is where my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com comes in. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So click the very first link here in the YouTube description to access my course, along with many others, for a very low monthly fee. All right, so here we have a document. Um, we're in Visual Studio Clo Code. Clode. Did I say Clode? Oh, this is already starting out horrible in the new house. Anyhow, we have an index.html. You know, I have the, the typical boilerplate, which if you use Emmet, use the exclamation point enter, and that'll give you all that just in one keystroke. Um, we're linking up our CSS main.css file. Um, that's in a folder, CSS, and then main.sass. Just makes life a tad bit easier using SAS. And then we're going to click watch SAS, but you need the live SAS uh, compiler right here. And then we're also going to use the live server plugin. Um, so we can right click open with live server and momentarily it will show up right here, which is blank because we have a blank index file. All right. So to do this, what we're going to do first here is um, I do have, as you can see, an abstract.jpg. I got this from unsplash.com. Um, if you just type in abstract, I think you'll find it. Um, it's one of the first pictures, I think. Uh, if not, scroll down. Or just type colorful. I think that was another search term I used. Um, and just put it in your, uh, you know, right in the root of your project folder. I called mine glass. Um, and we're going to reference that first. Um, and that's kind of going to be the background um, that will help us facilitate this effect. So image source equals abstract.jpg. Alt is just going to be abstract background. All right. So we save it and then we get uh, that big mess. All right, um, next up after that, of course, we're gonna fix that. Um, we're gonna have a class just temporarily as um, circle. Um, and I kind of forgot, you know, I, I wanna um, comment this one out first. So I, I'm i gonna go ahead and hit my, I, I haven't done a comment in like forever. There we go. We're gonna leave it like this because it's gonna be easier to demonstrate this with a, a straight out circle first. You'll see what I mean. Um, so we're going to do a container with an ID of glass. Now, if, again, if you're confused about what that was, that's Emmet abbreviations. I have an Emmet tutorial. Just do a ch channel search on that. Um, th I'm giving this an ID as well because we'll reference it in JavaScript. Um, and then also we're going to have an H2, and that's going to be a class of seq, C -S -E -Q for sequence, um, and that'll be a sequence animation. 
And it's just easier to do that uh, if you want to do like a sequence based animation, just give them the same class. I should have used my Emmet abbreviations there. There we go. And then for here, I, I'm going to copy and paste this off my reference code. Yes, people, I use reference code along with everybody else because the tutorial would just be slow and choppy if you're trying to do this live without having the project done first. I know some people get mad about that, but they suck. All right, graph morphism realized. All right. So that's all of our HTML right there. So now if we look at what we have going on, we got this. All right. It's very ugly. All right. So let's go over here and in our main.sass, I'm just going to paste in just some the, the body. I mean, it's so simple. We have our background. Um, it's just a very light blue, as you can see here. We got black for the font colors, poppins, my new favorite font, margin zero, and padding. <laughs> That's how I'm defining the container. I'm kind of lazy. This is not responsive. Um, and what we're going to do is get that circle going. So the circle, we're just going to position absolute this thing. And we're going to top 200 pixels, left 200 pixels. We're going to left, wait, no, we're going to width 400 pixels and height 400 pixels. We'll also background this thing, RGB, we're gonna do um, 160, 59, and 255. That gives us that purple. And then border radius, we'll do 50%, and then Z index, negative one. And that will give us a circle. <laughs> <laughs> or not. It's not applying my styling. Oh, because we need to watch SAS first. I'm an idiot. Oh my God. So yeah, I was genuinely confused and I hope I cut out most of that. Let's get Z index back in there. So stupid. All right, now, here we go. All right, so that's our circle. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's define our container because that is the next element right here. All right, so container, we're gonna have display inline block because I don't want it stretching all the way out 100% width of the, um, the, the container, or the browser. We're gonna do background, RGBA, 255, 255, 255. That means white, by the way. And then A is alpha, so we're gonna do like 0 0.2, all right? And then we're gonna do like padding, 3M units. And again, if you wanna see what's happening here, you know, this is, this is kind of glassy, isn't it? But it's nowhere near the effect that we want. Um, we're going to do border radius just to round those out at 3M units. Um, we're going to position relative this thing and Z index one um, right there. Okay, we're making some progress. And then here comes uh, the actual effect that you're here for. So backdrop filter blur 40 pixels. Now let's see what that does. Look at that. That is exciting, isn't it? Just works very well. Now we can still, we can give it like kind of like an emboss effect by adding this next property. Border, solid, let's say two pixels, transparent. So now watch this. Oh wait, we have to have this other property here. Background hyphen clip. We're gonna do padding box. Let's get back here. There we go. Now we can see this edge, very subtle edge right here. Let's also do a box shadow. And this is optional, you don't have to do it. We'll do 10 pixels, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, and then RGBA. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and I, I, I hate typing out all of these values. Um, I'll hover over it and show you what's happening. It's just like this mid, you know, desaturated gray with a very low, that's only 3% for the opacity because you don't want your shadows to really come out too, too much. So it's very just not noticeable. So you can see that this is how this, is how this property works uh, for, um, which is primarily this backdrop filter property. So if we change this to like 10 pixels, we'll see uh, the effect is a lot less so. So it's up to you in terms of how much you want to blur it. All right. Um, so next, let's go ahead now and let's get rid of our circle. And now if we apply this, you're going to see um, 
we have to uncomment the image. All right. Now this isn't going to work yet. So let's get our image fixed up here. So for our image, we'll do a position absolute. We'll do Z index negative two. Height is going to be 100 viewport height. Top zero and left zero. All right, so now look at that. So it's automatically having this section here uh, with the backdrop filter. As you can see, if I, I do the zoom, it'll just work anywhere. Very cool stuff. Um, so now uh, let's also, I, I wanted to paste just a couple more rule sets in here to, to make this a little bit better looking. So I'm going to paste this H2, H1, H2, and paragraph, and then also our H1, I'm going to paste, post out here, and I'm going to get rid of that for a second. And so now, all right, so this is our kind of our final effect here. It's not final though, because I want to animate this thing. Just to show you how cool this looks, I, I think if you add some motion to this effect, it's really cool. So as always, uh, when it comes to you know any type of sequence-based animation, I want to use GSAP. So for GSAP, I all we have to do is include this. All right. So if you go to um, Google and type GSAP three CDN, you'll see the first link and you'll get the, C, the this link right here. We're going to script. All right. So now. We're going to get our glass. So const glass equals document dot get element by ID glass already. And then we're going to create a uh, timeline, gsap.timeline. Inside of here, we're just going to have some defaults. We're going to change the default easings as well as the duration to 1.5. And that is lacking. There we go. All right. So now in here, we're going to say timeline from, and we'll animate our image first. So we're going to say X um, negative 10%. All right. In opacity zero. All right. So it, this is all going to, it's going to take a little bit of time to get this up and running and looking well. All right. So that's the first thing we're doing. Then we're going to say uh, from, we're going to take our container and we're going to say opacity zero, delay is going to be 0.5 and duration will be one. So we're overriding the default 1.5. And then also we're going to have this start at the same time. So we're going to do uh, in the third parameter of the from method, 1.5 seconds, All right? So So that's, that gives us just, it, it kind of just comes in right there. We're also going to do another one from on the container as well. And we're going to say in here, X is going to be, let's see, negative 20% backdrop filter. And we can animate the fil the backdrop or the filter rather. So the blur filter, we're going to put zero, All right? So watch this now. Look at that. I love it. it, it animating the, this filter this way with movement kind of creates like this motion blur effect. Let me zoom it up more. Nice. Let's keep on just because this is so fun. Um, next up, we're going to do from Let's do our sequence animation. So our sequence class, which we added to two of the type elements. So we'll do negative 30 for the Y axis, axis rather, not access, zero on opacity, stagger 0.2 between each of uh, those animations and then 0.5 for the duration. And then this will be start, this will start uh, a half second sooner than it would. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, so let's continue on. I think we're going to do one final. So our from, we're going to say H1. Y is going to be 20. Clip path here is going to be inset. Um, we're going to do 
zero, zero. Animated the clip path is very fun. And zero. And on our third argument or parameter, it's going to be negative 0.8. So for this to work, we have to go back to our H1 and set the clip path to hide it by default. So we do this. Now, if you're curious about like where I'm getting these values from, I, I mentioned this in previous tutorials. I'll show you in a second. All right, let's, uh, there we go. One more time. I'm gonna show you the tool I use. Sweet. Uh, we're gonna use um, CSS Clippy is what I type in. I can never, never remember the URL. Um, so if we come out here, we can see inset, all right? So we can, by default, animate all these positions. So by default, if you wanna hide something at first, you just push that up and then this gives you a clip path. And then if you wanna show it, there you go. Actually, so yeah, we're showing it by default because we're using the two method. Um, where are we using two? Yeah, we're using the from method. So we're going from hidden right here to revealing it. And it animates that property, which looks really cool. All right, awesome, awesome stuff.